Hi folks and welcome to this new video. In today's episode I will talk about the very best code editor for M1 Macs like the MacBook Air, the MacBook Pro, the Mac Mini and the newly announced iMac. As we know, more and more Macs will be released and still containing the Apple Silicon chip in the future, so it's crucial for software developers to choose the right tools to get the work done. I am now using M1 powered MacBooks for about over 4 months now. To get an overall opinion from this time period, watch my previous video where I talked about my long time experience. Before I share my experiences with you, let me tell you a little bit more about today's sponsor. As you guys know, without a sponsor it would be impossible for me to continue to make these videos and tests for you. So have a listen. Skillshare is an online learning platform which is highly affordable for about $10 a month on a yearly subscription. I personally love the fact that with one subscription you get so many different high quality videos from all different fields out there. You can learn about coding, filmmaking, marketing, animation, UI, UX design and so on. So there is limitless possibilities. One of my favorite things in software development, as you guys probably know, is clean code and guess what? On Skillshare is a lovely course from Christian Hamann, senior developer at Microsoft from Berlin, about the JavaScript toolkit, write cleaner, faster and better code. I highly respect Christian and can recommend his class without any doubt. You will just learn how to write elegant, clean and better code in the future. If you're completely new in the world of software development and clean code is just a phrase which confuses you, don't worry more. There are plenty of beginner courses on Skillshare as well. So it doesn't matter if you are a beginner, intermediate or expert developer or in your specific field, you can always and will always learn more on Skillshare, I guarantee you that. What have you done? Skillshare and I partnered up so that the first 1000 users who use my link in the description to sign up, get a free membership trial of Skillshare Premium. And now let's get back into the regular video. Now it's time for the big, big reveal of my very favorite code editor for the M1 lineup and probably for all machines, regardless if it's using Windows, Linux or Mac OS with Intel chip. You guys probably know already the answer without I'm telling you because in my previous video I heavily used this editor and without any surprise it is the Visual Studio Code Editor, or in short, VS Code. Since the app is optimized for Apple Silicon a couple months ago, this piece of software literally flies through source code like nothing else. Surely, you can get a Spectre Windows machine with Ryzen processors. As you've seen in my previous video, I got here a Ryzen 3900X. It's a 12 core CPU, which is insanely fast, but it has a hefty price tag, but remember, the MacBook Air, which I'm using also, retails for around $1,000, which gives you an unprecedented performance for this very low price point. I imagine using uh, the previous Intel version of the MacBook Pro, the 13 inch one, and this machine was slow as hell, it was loud, it's getting hot, so you can probably fry egg on it. This MacBook Air stays quiet, surely it doesn't have a fan, so <laughs> that's an obvious advantage, but it performs like a champion. It's ridiculous that such a tiny little laptop can perform so well, it's unbelievable. The starter time for VS Code is just phenomenal. I mean, it just starts instantaneously and keeps running and running and running. I developed my very own micro software service product, which is called QR Maker. Um, you can find the link in the description below or head over to qrmaker.eu uh, to get a sneak peek or a peek for the uh, application itself. Angular for the application and React in combination with Next.js to get server side rendering for the landing page. And there was not even the slightest problem at all, guys. So, I mean, this, this editor and this machine is a match made in heaven. I also used this with a .NET 5 application, uh, which used Docker images. Just keep in mind to double check if your desired container supports the M1 uh, architecture and runs on it. And in my case it did, so it just worked flawlessly. I mean, unbelievable that such a tiny little machine with so less thermals can do such amazing work. It's, it's something I've never experienced and seen in my life before, so that is absolutely amazing. And more than that, it just performs and keeps performing. Literally, there were no waiting times when you do something editor specific and the fast build time surely helps to increase the confidence 
in this editor machine. I mean, there's a fair point to say building is not related so much to the editor because it is done usually in the terminal these days with your commands for, for Angular React, um, which are NPM related and stuff like that. But the terminal is kind of integrated in the editor. So for me, it's a huge, huge benefit for, for the editor to just start those things really in the same place and the editor keeps going and going and going. One more very important part of VS Code is the fact that the whole product is built on open source. I make no um, secret of this. I very much like open source. I'm a big fan of it. You can watch the source code on GitHub and everybody, surely you have to get a, a GitHub account. You have to literally sign their um, contribution guidelines, read them through it. But after you've done that, everybody can contribute to VS Code, create issues, pull requests and help out the community. It's no longer a closed source product like the traditional Visual Studio, which gives so many programmers headache for its rubbish performance overall and the blown up architecture behind it. So big, big fan of, of VS Code. I personally think the Apple cycle is spot on as well. Basically you get an update every month. So Microsoft is very open about the pipeline, schedule, um, release notes as well. So I guess this is the perfect way for such a big product to release it monthly. You can easily extend the functionality of VS Code via extensions. That's a, a huge part of this editor. Surely other editors have the same capabilities, but in my experience, VS Code does this exceptionally well. If you need something extra, there's probably already an extension. Some of them are more language specific. Some of them are specific for different tools, like I can imagine about GitLand, Sonaland for, for Sonar Cloud integration and technologies. There are, as I said before, language specific tools. If you're writing your code in C Sharp, you get an extension. If you're writing your code with React, with Angular, Vue.js, there are already some extensions available for those technologies and frameworks. And one big part is you can set and with extensions for different workspaces as well. So surely you don't want to use a C Sharp extension when you're working on a React project and vice versa. All in all, it's a very modern and future-proof code editor, uh, which can hardly be beaten at the moment. As I said in the beginning, the performance, the extensibility, the big community makes this code editor my favorite and surely the best option for M-powered Macs as well. I can only imagine in the future when we get the M1X or the rumored M2 chip, I don't know which will be eventually the name of it, but if we get a 16 inch MacBook Pro, recently we got the new iMac 24 inch, there is a rumored 32 inch version with a much more powerful CPU unit. I can only imagine this thing is even flying more than the actual M1 chips, which is hardly, hardly imaginable. All right, guys, so that was my short video about my favorite code editor for the M1 Max and Apple Silicon powered machines. And make no mistake about it, I love this editor. I use it on all my different operating systems, regardless of Mac OS, Windows, Linux, as I said before, this thing is just exceptionally good and it keeps getting better and better every month. What do you guys think about VS Code in general? Or what do you think about VS Code on M1? And how are your experiences if you already used it? Let me know in the comments below. So basically, I'll see you folks in the next one. Bye guys.